Welcome to the Provocative Perspectives video cast and podcast from Maven. We present insights from leading B2B service providers that challenge how executive decision makers should think about issues that are important and urgent to them. Our guests are consultants, fractional executives, and others who offer expertise as a service who are in the top 20% of their profession. Following Maven's proprietary Provocative Perspectives framework, they tell a compelling story that moves the needle for their clients. And here's our host, the co-founder and CEO of Maven, Jay Kingley. I'm Jay Kingley, co-founder and CEO of Maven. Welcome to our show, where our guests share their provocative perspective on what their target market is missing out on. I'm happy to welcome Will Dukes of Sales Partners Florida. Will is based in Orlando, Florida. Will is going to talk to us today about why attorneys struggle to get clients consistent with the quality of their legal advice and service. I'm Will Dukes with Sales Partners. Let's talk about why great attorneys struggle to get great clients. Law school taught you how to be a good attorney and help clients solve legal problems. And I bet one of the reasons you started your firm was so that you could make a difference for your clients. Yet you either lose clients that should be working with you to that big firm that is going to just charge them twice as much and stick them with a first year associate that makes them go through a paralegal or to that jackass that barely made it out of law school and had to take the bar four times to pass. You're dedicated to justice, but client acquisition just isn't just. It is insanely frustrating to be as diligent as you are only to have perfect clients you know you're the perfect attorney for just walk out of your office because they were just looking for free legal advice. And I know how confounding it is to see all the things other attorneys say work for them fail for you and not know why. You're smart enough to figure this out if, of course, you didn't have a law firm to run. Why can't it just be enough to be a great lawyer. Half of the small firm attorneys I've known are stuck being dependent on referrals and of counsel relationships from other attorneys, the people that can recognize their great lawyers, but can't give them consistent work, quality clients, and at the rates that they deserve. Most others stay perpetually annoyed with the amount of energy, time, and money that they have to invest in all of the branding, marketing, and sales just to end up sounding like every other firm out there. But there is a small percentage, probably less than 5%, that have grown beyond seven-figure firms. They still get referrals and they still invest in marketing. But what sets them apart is knowing this. Clients don't pick the best attorneys. Clients pick the best attorneys for them. And those are two completely different standards. Not understanding that difference is why so many attorneys have websites that read like resumes and consultations that sound like auditions. They think the client has to understand that they're the best attorney out there. But the reality is you'll be the best attorney for the client from their perspective when you're the one that understands them. That's when you go from being an attorney to being their advocate. When they understand that you're not only capable of helping them, but that you want to help. All the rational explanations around your track record, skill, and expertise still matter. They're just secondary. And this simple misunderstanding of decision metrics is exactly why your branding is forgettable, your marketing sounds like everyone else's, and people leave your sales consultations in more uncertainty than when they arrive. If you want to stop feeling like you're constantly auditioning and start closing more of the kinds of cases that you want to be working on, there are a few things that you need to do. One, know who your best clients are. Lots of attorneys segment their client list by demographics and case type, but you have to be willing to go further and segment by psychographics, their beliefs, behaviors, and motivations. Number two, map out all of the problems that you solve for them deeply. 
not just what practice area the problems fell into or the service you performed. You have to be able to demonstrate that you understand what their problems were, why they were problems for them, and what outcome that they were specifically looking for. And number three, start aligning your branding, marketing, and sales processes to those problems and those client profiles. That means separate messaging, separate campaigns, and separate processes for each profile. In Stephen Covey's classic, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the very first habits was to seek first to understand, then be understood. And it turns out that's how great attorneys become highly effective at converting great clients too. It's simple, but not easy. That's why so many attorneys just talk about themselves and why they're always complaining about the clients that they do have. If you'd like to have a conversation about how you can stop auditioning and start closing the cases that you want, connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm Will Dukes with Sales Partners. There's nothing like a great turn of phrase to drive home the importance and the insight of a great message. And Will, your turn of phrase in talking about attorneys, where you say you're dedicated to justice and yet client acquisition is not just really hit home. I think any attorney out there and probably well beyond attorneys to any professional takes great pride in what they do for their clients. They've gone to school, they've apprenticed, they've interned, and they have practiced at being great at what they do. And yet, so often they think that when it comes to client acquisition, that is sufficient. And absolutely, it's necessary. No one won't, wants to work with someone who's average. But in and of itself, that doesn't get clients through the door. And I think the things that you're talking about, the how to position yourself, how to message yourself, how to make it about the client and not about you, I think is absolute gold. So thank you for sharing that. We're now going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to learn a bit more about Will. Consultants and other providers of expertise as a service lose too many sleepless nights worrying about where their future clients and revenues are going to come from. You've been told over and over that if you want more clients, you have to do more marketing, more networking, more LinkedIn outreach, more email blasts, and even hiring appointment setters to do more cold calling. What if instead you could get more clients by doing less marketing? Maven works with its clients to generate all the referrals they need to not only be fully booked, but to have a pipeline that takes the worry away on where their future business is coming from. Maven, the referrability edge, do it with you advisory service takes you from random acts of marketing to powering your business with referrals and even all the way to becoming remarkably referable where you go from doing the work to a highly compensated CXO whisper. So email j.kingley at referabilitymaven.com to schedule an introductory call to learn more. Welcome back. We're talking to Will Dukes of Sales Partners Florida. Let's find out a bit more about you, Will. And let's start with, share with our audience the pain points you solve for your clients and why they need you to get rid of the pain. There's a few around that, but you kind of hit it on the, the head there with the, the attorneys that know they're doing a, a good job. They're really good at the, the practice of law and they go out and start a, a firm on their own, either because they kind of had that entrepreneurial bug or maybe it was just out of necessity. And you know, I have clients that you know, were in practice for six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and they were just stuck and they were still struggling to, to get by. And they were just frustrated. In, in not being able to, to grow their firm and just being a good attorney wasn't uh, enough. And so how do they, how do they shift their, their messaging and how do they look at branding, marketing, and sales from that strategic standpoint where they still feel good about the messaging? They don't feel like they're selling out to you know, the, all the, the latest tactics and they don't feel like they're having to, to chase that because the, the next pain point would be when they've tried to go and do marketing, 
they've got 10,000 different vendors trying to, to pitch them the latest, greatest thing on what's going to, to, to grow their law firm or this technology or this ad tactic. And you know, all those things can be good and fit, but they have to be laid in the right place and they have to be done at the right time. If you're a very small firm, some things just aren't going to work. Having someone that can come in and really understand where they're at, where what their goals are, what they're trying to accomplish in their firm and help them to lean on their own strengths and the, the ability to, to educate their potential clients and, and get them to a, a place where they build that trust and credibility and have the processes to effectively be able to convert them into clients. So everything is uh, aligned and we're not leaving any of those pieces off the, the table. Those are really the, the pain points that, that we help our clients solve. Well, as you mentioned, being great at what you do is necessary, even if it's not sufficient. I mean, who wants to hire an attorney who's mediocre at the practice of law? Likewise, who wants to hire someone who can help them with their marketing and sales and bring those clients in the door who's not any good at it? So the obvious question for you is, what makes you great at what you do? So if we get down into the, you know, just kind of those core characteristics uh, that, that come, if you look into uh, to my background, like the, when I talk about client cultivation or, or being a sales farmer, that that's not a gimmick. Like I, I grew up on a farm. So being able to look at things from a systematic process of step one, step two, and, and everything has to connect and work to produce a result at the end. I mean, that's something that, that is, I'm you know, pretty almost you know, born intrinsically with, but definitely uh, grew up and developed around. And then going off uh, later in my, my studies, I, I almost became a, a scientist. So I have a very analytical and, and data driven approach. So it's not just about, all right, let's, I've got a wild hair. Let's just think and, and do this. All right, we can go do some experiments, but let's test and actually have measurable data and come up with results, things that are going to lead us to the next step and, and be able to, to do that in a systematic process. But ultimately, before I, I got into to business on my own, you know, I was a, a teacher and an educator. And that came out of just a, 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 a realization recognizing that that is my core identity and 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 my ultimate gift and skill set is just that ability to to be able to to educate and all these things tie into together and so when i went into to business helping people with sales and marketing ultimately it's about strategic communication and helping those potential clients get from point a which is this place of uncertainty to point b which is this is definitely the right person for me and the, the best attorney for me in my situation. And, and that is ultimately a communication and a, an experience process leading people through that. And so it's what has led to, to my success and my client's success through that has uh, ultimately just been the culmination of my life experience and uh, the application of it in uh, helping them solve their problems. Farmer to scientist to teacher now to marketing and sales, a, a tremendous uh, career path. Let me dig just a little bit deeper on that. As you look back on your journey through life, what is it that you experienced that you would say has had the biggest impact to determine what it is that you do today? You know, there, there's a lot of those uh, you know, keystone moments when I, you, know, you kind of look back in hindsight in 2020, that, that really kind of shifted the, the, the path. The experience that ultimately led me out of the, the public education classroom into to business for myself, um, it was probably a different uh, episode, but I, I had this, this vision and kind of this expectation that I would go out and be able to, to teach and train. And originally, you know, the business was going to be more focused on, on that kind of model of doing seminars and, and and training, the experience that happened in kind of getting into uh, some of these smaller business networks and seeing a lot of attorneys um, and, and other small business owners as well, that wasn't going to be as practical. And then looking at my own experience, like I cashed out my teacher's retirement and I blew about 50 grand on all these different marketing things that people uh, presented or as it was uh, the, the way to go. Like I was really good 
at being a, a teacher, as an educator, as a trainer, and you know, put me up in front of the room all day long. But when it came to actually promoting my business, that wasn't enough either. And when I recognized that a lot of these other learned professionals like attorneys had uh, the similar problem, there, there became that resonance there that, uh, that allowed me to, to come in and, and really show the, the empathy with, with what they're dealing because you know, it, it sucks to go through that much education, put in all the experience, get the, the accolades and, and be able to show that you're an expert at, at what you're doing and have that, that dedication to providing great results for your clients, but just be kind of passed over or not know how to, to communicate that message in a way that causes people to take action. So through my own journey through that and through working with uh, clients over the, the last 12 years or so, that's really what's kind of developed uh, out of this and, and led us to where we are today. Well, in my experience of dealing with all different types of attorneys, the skill set, the preparation, the education, and the practice of law that makes them really good at what they do, unfortunately, does not make them great at getting clients and building a successful business that matches their competence in the practice of law. You have laid out, I think, quite clearly their challenges, but more so how they need to change their thinking, how they need to embrace a different way of looking at clients and making sure that they understand that clients are really choosing them not because they're best, they're the best attorney at a given practice area, but because they are the best attorney for that client. So I am sure that you're going to hear from a lot of attorneys out in the audience wanting to continue the discussion with you. And we've put Will's contact information earlier in this video. So I encourage everyone to reach out. This is the most important thing, I always say, job one, if you have your own practice, is making sure you have clients. Because you have no, if you have no clients, it doesn't matter how good you are at what you do if there's nobody who can take advantage and benefit from what it is you do. So, Will, I want to thank you to our audience. Let's continue to crush it. Until next time. Mm-hmm.